Good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, I will say a few jokes because it is 4 p.m. for me here in London, so uh, I need to keep, keep myself entertained. Right, so um, I'm French-Canadian from Montreal, so here we go. Here's uh, what, uh, where my accent is from. I've been around the world of business subjects for um, over 20 years. Um, I'm an ex of uh, of the mothership I started at Crystal Decisions over here in the UK in 2001. Of course, uh, we were acquired by Business Objects shortly after that. And I've, I've held many, many roles around uh, support, consulting, training uh, for, for uh, a big 15 years. And I've joined the, the team at 360 Suite uh, over two and a half years ago. Now, today we'll talk about um, how, how um, you can now you know, use SAP business objects on top of Snowflake. A lot of what I'll talk about today would be applicable to other um, database vendors, but we just decided today to, um, to talk about um, um, Snowflake um, um, specifically. Now, um, as always, for those of you who know um, our webinars, like Bruno said, please do ask questions at any time. I will have a look at them at the end. Um, this session is recorded, so um, you will receive, I don't know if it's later today or tomorrow, an email from us um, with the recordings and uh, all the Q&A. We don't have time to cover all the answer and all, the, all of the questions and answers. There'll be Q&A sent to you um, offline as well. Um, and please, um, always super helpful. There'll be a very short um, exit survey at the end. Always great for us to do, uh, um, to do better. Um, you know, if possible. Okay, first quote of the day, and this is uh, this is from one of my favorite movies, probably. Snowflake is awesome. By me. Actually, no, it's by Lego Batman. So this is a little. Uh, those of you who've seen Lego Batman, you will understand this joke here. But for it is Snowflake is is really awesome. I discovered a bit late, um, about a year ago, um, what Snowflake is, and I've been using it since. A little bit since then, but Snowflake, if you don't know, and again, I know there are other vendors doing something similar, but Snowflake, it's a cloud built software, which is software as a service. Yeah, so I'll come back to that um, on next slide. Why is having a database or other technology on, on, on a SaaS platform so good? It's because it can give you instant elasticity, right? Today, you need a database which can cope with 10 users. And tomorrow you need that database to handle a, a million more rows, or a million, you know, a terabyte more data and a hundred users. You just go and say, click, click, click. I want to handle more. Of course, you, you'll have to pay more, but you don't have to do anything about it. The cloud will take care of that for you. And they have great capabilities um, with uh, data sharing. So you can securely share um, your data with you know older people or even third third party companies. The pricing is per second, um, and uh, Snowflake is available on the um, major um, uh, cloud vendors, so um, Amazon, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. So Snowflake, it's not a transactional database. It's used for data warehousing, and we'll come back to that, which is why so many of our customers. Um, have chosen to to go to Snowflake recently, especially since um, it is now supported by SAP Business Objects from version BI 4.2, Service Pack 8. Okay, I talked about a SaaS or software as a service um, earlier, just a couple of differences here. So for those of you who are not in the cloud, if you have your own data center, you'll be on the left, right? You'll be you know, on the on-premise um, um, infrastructure, so you have your own hardware, your own storage, you maintain your own operating system, your software, the application, absolutely everything, it's managed by you on-premise. Now, some of you might have um, third-party companies who do the hosting of the hardware for you, right? So um, they have their own data center, they take care of the hardware, but you will take care of the operating system and everything above yourself. That's called an infra infrastructure as a service. So for those of you like me, for instance, here, I have a VM on AWS. Um, AWS take care of 
of the tin, right? Just of the hardware. Everything else, OS and above, it's me dealing with this. So infrastructure as a service. Other companies will do platform as a service, right? It means that you only take care of administering your own application. They will do the rest. And finally, SaaS, you do nothing. You say, you know, hey, uh, Google, I want a Gmail account. You do nothing. Um, Snowflake, I want a new database. That's it. It's provided for you. Now, there's no right or wrong here. Okay, I just want to say, and I'll come back to that later, some customers continuing on-premise or maybe infrastructure as a service is the right thing for them based on their utilization. Others, it will be much more interesting to consider software as a service. So again, uh, it's not one fit for all solution, but just different, uh, different um, um, alternatives. Now, everybody say, oh, it's super expensive to have, uh, you know, on-premise things. And when you ask people, you know, what do you say, or what do you consider as being a cost of having on-premise solution? And of course, you'll say, well, I need to maintain my server, you know, and I need to, you know, to apply patches and that sort of things. But it's actually so many things, um, you know, the, the hardware, the support of that hardware, the, the, the software license, that's operating system, that's in the case of a database, a database vendor, you need to pay support for all this. You have multiple environments, you know, dev, test, prod, DR, maybe more. Uh, you may be managing this across multiple sites. There's backups, there's backups retention. Uh, this data center, one or many, if you have multiple sites, you know, uh, the floor space, the air conditioning, the electricity, I mean, there's so many things. Um, backups is there twice because it's super important, of course. Um, you need all of these people managing all this. You need at least two people to manage all the different aspects. Yeah? So the IT guys, database admin, the network, the security people. You may even need to pay external consultants from time to time because you know um, you may not have the in-house skills to do to do it all. So it's a huge cost to maintain something on 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 premise. So if I had to compare side by side, on premises versus versus SaaS or Snowflake, you know the initial cost is high. You need to buy everything and set it up. The maintenance it's probably medium or or high because there's a lot of things to, there's a lot of moving pieces, yeah, a lot of things to, to maintain. But at least the cost prediction is easy. You, you've done the acquisition, you know how much it was, and then you can have a more or less planned annual budget for this. Now, Snowflake, there is, I say initial cost low, initial cost is zero, right? There's nothing to do. You just set up your database and uh, your tables and your data whenever you're ready. Now, it's not because it's in the cloud that you don't need to do maintenance, right? There's some people that will be managing the, um, the, the administration. Um, you need to load the data. So there's still obviously things that needs to be done. The cost prediction is, is difficult. Although you can monitor it really well, it's difficult because maybe you have expected that you'll have X amount of users doing this type of queries uh, how many times a day. but you know, your end users, they do self-service work. Um, if they end up doing city queries or doing much more scheduling than you expected, the cost will be higher than you expected. So you need to care, you know, to, to keep an eye on that. But the other benefit is tomorrow you need a new database. You click new database and you're done. You don't need to contact your DBA. We start asking a lot of questions if they're available, if your server has enough resources left to give you this extra database, right? So so a lot of, uh, and that's, that's the elasticity bit we were talking about earlier. So a SaaS model, you pay for the compute and the storage that you actually use. But again, warning for this cloud hangover, I saw this term online, is um, um, it may appear cheaper, but if you have not understood your utilization, you have not understood the, the activity, you may, and probably will end up paying more than you expected. So again, you have to be careful with your assessment. Now, I, like, um, I quite like this, uh, this, assessment, this, this um, analogy here um, to, to, to compare the on-premise and the cloud. On the left, that's exactly the car I own here in London. 
four years ago I decided it would be a good idea to buy a car, but I live in central London, so I thought, you know what, I'll be able to go on weekends. So um, I had to buy the car, pay the taxes, I need a parking permit on the street, uh, the insurances for you know me, the rest of my family, never mind uh, the, the repairs that I'd have to 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 you know to do the gas, the road tax. I mean, so many things, right? But after spending all that money, I have my car. I can use it whenever I want. Okay, um, I cannot have ten people in the car if I want to. That's the model I bought. I'm restricted with what I bought. I cannot decide to carry, you know. My, uh, my 20 cases of wine when I do a road trip to France. <laughs> so um, that's it, it's what I have. But at least I know how much it's now going to cost me every year and, and, and I know what I can do with it. Now, um, in the UK, we don't have Lyft, we have Uber, but you get the point. Um, my upfront cost was zero. I don't need to do anything, right? I take the phone, I want a car, the car is coming. Tomorrow, I want to. I want a bigger car because I have more people um, with me. I order a Uber XL. Again, doesn't matter to me. I pay a bit more, but my upfront cost, upfront cost was still zero. So you see that you know it's different type of utilization, different type of costs. Now, if you do like me, you know I bought this car, and over the last four years, I have nine thousand miles. It was not a good decision to buy a car. But having said that, you know, I did long road trips in France and all that, but I pay a lot every month for, for something I don't use. So for me, a mix of Uber and renting a car, which is a, let's call it a cloud-ish solution, would have, been, would have been better. But for other people, if you need a car five days a week to do a hundred miles a day over long distances and not in the city center, but on the countryside, these car sharing apps will not be good for you. So that's what I meant earlier. Um, the right solution is based on what you're trying to do and how you will do it, right? And then you'll determine which, which solution is, 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 is best. So here's time for um, the first poll. We just have a, a couple here. We just wondered, you know, um, if you are planning to um, migrate to a cloud database, let's say in the next six months. So you see a few um, a, a few options here. We know there is more cloud databases than that, but uh, SAP HANA Cloud, of course, um, Snowflake we're talking about, and then there's I mean Amazon, uh, Microsoft have their own solutions, and there is more, right? <laughs> oh Bruno, that's uh, that last option is yours. Do you want to read it? Yeah, you know it's. It's always so funny because in the past, before the crisis, people would always say, hey, you know what? Cloud, I really want to go, but it's like heaven. And it's just like heaven. I just don't want it to go too quickly. So we used to hear that a lot. And uh, since uh, the crisis started, actually, we see a lot of people who want to go to the cloud very quickly. So I guess it's not as true anymore. And I see people are voting. So that's pretty cool. We've got. Uh, I think almost 50% of people who voted. That's great. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll close this now. Uh, thank you for those who had the time to vote. Just need to move on, but uh, um, we'll share. Um, the results should appear on your screen now. So it's great to see that, yeah, um, like Guido said, about half of you are planning to go to the cloud. Others will wait a, will wait a bit longer or maybe not do it for, for, for a very long time. Again, it depends uh, um, um, where you're coming from and what you're trying to do. Excellent. Okay, so we gave a bit of background on cloud databases. Now, what is data migration, right? Data migration is the process of selecting the data that you, you know, that you have on premise, you know, on your on, on your existing source. You may need to prepare it and transform it. It depends on your project, and then you want to load it in. Um, your destination database. So in this case, it is Snowflake, right? So for some of you, it's going to be a simple lift and shift. So you'll do an ETL from your source to Snowflake, so you can continue to do your, your BI and your analytics on top of this new database. Others will um, process to some transformation for one reason or another before loading to Snowflake, and I'll come back to that. Now, there's three scenarios I wanted to highlight today. I'm sure there is more, but I wanted to, 
to create three different categories. So ho hopefully they're, they're a little bit uh, catch all of these three categories here. Some of you will be on the left, scenario number one, right? I have a database. That database is on some easy relational you know, uh, system, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle or something. It's relational. I don't plan to do any transformation. I just want to lift and ship exactly what, to, what I have to, to this new uh, database. And luckily, because you know, there's no conflict of column types like date times or, 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 or specific vendor SQL statement, I don't, you know, I'm not going to need to transform my universes. So this is probably the easiest scenario. I don't know how, how common this is going to be, but that's possible, right? So 360 suite, and I'll come back to that over the next few slides, and I'll do some technical demos in, in the next few minutes, but 360 suite can help, right? We can help you to do a full pre-migration assessment. So we can do some impact analysis. We can tell you what's used and not used. So there's a lot of things we can do so you know what, um, um, well, what needs to be migrated, or perhaps you choose to migrate everything, but we'll help you to test because testing is important. You want to make sure that there's no regression of data for one reason or another and validate the performance, right? The cloud is awesome, yes, but the cloud, you pay for what you get. If you pay for, for an extra small um, engine on Snowflake because you want to save a bit of money, but the right equivalent will have been to take maybe a, a, a medium or a large, but you don't because it's too much money. Well, then you, you may affect performance, right? So again, um, we can help validating the data and, and the performance. Now, there's a scenario in the middle here, and I picked this one because um, one of our customers who signed with us recently, they are, uh, and they are going to Snowflake actually, So, but they are in this specific scenario here. They are moving, and you know, the name is not important, but they are moving from a non-relational database in, in their case. Or let's take the scenario that you're moving from a very old relational database and it's time to rebuild a lot of stuff, right? The consequence of this is that your existing universes will not work. So you'll need to start with new universes. And that probably means most probably that you'll need to start building new reports as well. So there's a lot of new thing here. It's a, this is a, a transformation project, but we can still help, right? Because think about it. If you have one or many sources, there's tons and tons of tables and columns and everything, and you're already planning to do transformation. Do you really need to migrate all of it to this new database? Maybe not. So with 360, and again, I'll demonstrate this, but we can tell you actually not only which tables from which databases, but even which fields, which columns in each tables are used and not used. So if you want to do a pre-selection of the data that needs to be moved and the data you can leave behind if you want to, we can help with this data inventory. That's awesome. Now, in terms of performance, clearly there will be new reports. But I'll give you an example. You had some HR reports on top of your old system. You'll now give new HR reports on top of the new system. They'll be different. But with our solutions, you can even validate the performance and the data if you choose to between the old and the new world. So you can tell, you know, you can tell your business, you know, you can trust uh, this transformation. You'll have the same data at equal or better performance. So this is, this is really cool. And finally, let's call it the lift and shift advanced. So like the first solution, you will migrate your schema. When you migrate your schema, perhaps, um, it's not going to be identical, date, time, format, or other things, right? So, um, um, which means that the universe will need some significant update. Just think about the ownership uh, um, case, um, um, syntax of tables and columns. Um, you may have some universes which have specific um, SQL, uh, vendor, uh, vendor specific SQL inside of the universe, you know, the app prompts and the select and, and, and all this. So all of this will need to be repaired or, and that's even simpler, and I'm referring to the previous webinar we had with Gregory. Some of you, a lot of you have asked if UNVs were still supported in 4.3. They are still supported, but Snowflake is only working on top of UNX. So if you want to go to Snowflake and you're still on UNVs, you'll need to convert your UNV to your UNX. 
and then there'll be some more work to do. So 360 here can help for a lot for your pre-migration assessment. Once again, understanding what you have, what's used, not used. We can help repairing those universes. I'll demonstrate this live. We can help with backupping your platform before you start you know, touching any of your existing content. If your Webby and your Crystal, um, um, you choose to, to, to keep them, right? You, you have thousands and thousands of reports. You want them to point to this new UNX or to these updated universes. You're not going to repoint your crystals in your Web View one by one. We can help repointing all this in bulk, all this through automated jobs. And finally, of course, validate your data and your performance. Okay, so that's the scenario number one I talked about. It's the lit and shift. We help you doing the inventory of your content. What your, data, your content is pointing to, is it used or not used? Once you've done your analysis and you understand all this, you run your ETL, you migrate your data, you process, um, you, you, you proceed with the tests. Now, uh, sorry about this, a bit of formatting problem on my, on my number four, but you know, once you're live in the new world, you want to continue you know, maintaining all this, right? So all this assessment that you've done, your impact analysis, knowing what's used and not used, the same solutions you can continue to um, to, to, to do just that, the same actions. Now, remember with, 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 with SaaS technology, you pay for what you use, which is awesome because when you don't use it, well, you don't pay for the compute, but you pay for the storage, but still. But on the other hand, you don't want to have some users starting to schedule uh, 500 reports that were not planned because these 500 reports will have a direct cost, right? So monitoring your business objects platform can help to keep an eye on the cost, maintain them, and at least um, um, uh, you know, assign them to some cost that, um, that uh, Snowflake will, will give you. Now, the last one is supposed to say continued administrations and uh, governance, because the same 360 solutions we're talking about here, you continue having your backup, you're countering, managing, and administering your content, so everything in one place. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna put this. So that's Fonzie, right? Fonzie is very happy. So hey, that's cool. Now, transformation, very similar to the first one, but the main diff the main point here, and I mentioned this one already, is your data inventory. Only migrate the data that needs to be migrated if you choose to. Right? This is something very powerful, and we're able to do this because the metadata we extract. Is coming from the WB reports in the file store, from the universes in the file store, from the audit database, and from the system database. We take all of these things here, and we're able to tell you what's used, what's not used, by whom, and how, and so on. And then you proceed with the rest of your project. Now, you guess it, Fonzi is still super happy. Is it you, uh, Patrick Fonzi? <laughs> I'm. Uh, I think I'm. I think I'm. I'm too young to have seen it live on TV, but, but uh, I have. I have. <laughs> okay. Um, the lift and shift advance, right? This is this is if you need to do a lot of work here. You do your same pre-migration assessment we mentioned before. You migrate your data. Now, let's imagine the universe needs a lot of transformation because the table names have changed, the owners has changed, the syntax needs to be repaired, either in, for the dimensions or the measures. Just imagine doing this one by one on hundreds or thousands of objects in the universe. You want to do this in bulk to avoid the risk and spend less time. I'll show you how we can do this. Now, you are going to have to repoint your universe connections or at very least to repoint your Webby and Crystal Reports. Before you do that on thousands of objects, you want to do a backup. Obviously, you don't want to rely on your database backup and your VM server backup because that means that you'll, you'll waste more time and lose content, yeah? So you, you take 360, you back up everything. It's easy to restore only what needs to be restored with clicks and a web interface. Everybody can do this. You don't need IT test everything, and you see here <laughs> properly the day-to-day -day maintenance, right? So you continue to keep an eye on everything, 
you keep an eye on your costs and you continue to administer like backups and to test all the time. When you do a change in your ETL, you change, you do a change maybe in Snowflake, you change your universe, you keep testing for data and performance all the time. And now, you guess it, Ponzi is very happy. Now, this one, I don't know if you see the animation here, but he says, are you kidding me? Can, can we really, really do all this with 360? Then you have Ponzi who says, yes, sir. <laughs> of course we can. Now, last one before I do um, the live demo is I wanted to talk about SAP data services. Some of you will be using this technology as your ETL um, solution. Well, we have a brand new solution. So our existing customers, I mean, there's a few hundreds of you on the, on, on, on the call today. You may not know this because it's brand new, but we have a solution to read the metadata from, three, uh, from, from SAP data services. So you will need to change your ETL to now point to Snowflake. Once again, you want to know what's being used. We can do the full documentation of the workflows, the data flows, the mapping formulas, what's used and not used, use some met metadata about the jobs that you run, and think about this. This is a full impact analysis between business objects and data services, right? So you go from users do using reports, these reports using universes, these universes connecting to a destination database in an ETL, which is coming from a source. Now you do the full data lineage and, and impact analysis from start to finish. If you're using uh, data services, we can go even um, a little bit further. And then, yay, this is, this is the last Fonzie joke of the day. Actually, no, there'll be one more later. So you will okay. say, by the way, that you're Potsy. Uh... Patrick, I guess, in happy days. I, I, I don't know what you're, <laughs> what you're talking about. All right, okay, let me load uh, my uh, server um, here. Um, and again, if anybody have any questions, um, you know, um, in the meantime, uh, please, please go um, ahead. Okay, so you should see my server in any second, okay. Right, we talked about doing, first of all, an assessment, right? So um, you want to understand what you have, maybe for your transformation of data. So we have something here, um, it's called 360 Eyes, but it's part of this uh, database migration package that we have. So what I'm going to show you here, helpful for a database to Snowflake, but this could work from um, you know your existing database to another database, whichever one it is, and on-prem or in the cloud. So I have a number of reports here. There's, there's probably 83 built Webby reports. So this is what we call BI on BI, right? I've extracted a lot of metadata and I can give you a lot of answers. So I'm not going to open uh, all of them, but just some of them here. Now, if I was going through a database migration, I would like to know more about my reports. So one thing I'd like to know is, okay, I have this universe here. So this is a universe um, I've built. It's uh, Adventure Works. This universe is the one pointing to the data source I want to migrate. Maybe there'll be many, how many reports? Well, in my demo environment, there's only 10, 10 documents, yeah? But here you'll find out you have, uh, you have lots of documents in all of these folders. Some are private, some are, some, some, some are public. Okay, so at least you, 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 you're starting to understand a, a little bit about what's going on. And we'll come back about usage and non-usage a bit later. Now, these documents, right? These documents, so here's an example. This one has a big query, right? So these are all the objects which are part of the query. Like I said before, especially in the case of transformation, if it turns out that you have objects, and I'll come back, I'll come back to this later, but here's an example, account number. Cap number is not used in this report, but if it was not used in any report, what would be the point of moving that data? Yeah. Um, you know, this is not a transactional database, it's a data warehouse. If it's not useful for reporting purposes, you know, should it be there? If you have variables, again, are they used and not used? And we'll come back about documenting the variables, but um, you want to know if uh, you are 
if you have uh, any in any of these. Okay, so you've just learned a bit about your reports here. Now you want to know what these reports are pointing to. So um, I can just, I'll open uh, this one. Uh, yeah, that was the right one. So impact analysis, right? We're back here with this universe, which is my adventure works. This universe has a lot of objects, account number, carrier tracking. And here I can find out exactly which reports are using these objects. So uh, these are the reports that I would need to make sure I test later on because they are, you know, um, we don't want any, any regression. If some of you are doing freehand SQL in your WebB reports, there might be things happening that you don't know. So we can identify which reports have the freehand SQL. And if you want to see what freehand SQL is, of course, we can document that for you also. Um, and finally, um, one last thing here. I talked about variables earlier, those formulas. I can see here I have a couple of reports. They are very basic uh, variables, but again, to understand what I have out there will be important for my analysis um, for when I make a decision of what I need to move and not move. I talked a lot about usage and non-usage. What's the point of testing reports or testing universes or migrating data that have not been used? So again, now this is just an example for my 10 reports, but you see, you see here, I'm extracting information from the uh, system and all the database in this report. So I can see when actions were done and how long ago. So then you can decide um, what's used or never used, right? If I had something never used, it will appear here as well. And that's the point. That's what's difficult with business objects. The audit database will only show you activity done. If there's no activity done ever, the audit database doesn't have it. So you need to rely on the system database. And we are able to tell you all of this information here. Now, finally, for my analysis, the universes, which is probably what's even more important because that's what is uh, you know, communicating with your database. So here, at least you can start predicting what's going to happen. I see my objects from which tables they're coming from and um, for, for um, and, and uh, sorry, in my columns as well, yeah? So um, I need to, so I know thanks to this, which tables um, and which select, if there was any funny select um, that I need to, to analyze here. Now this one, I, this one I like a lot, yeah? If you remember, this is my adventure works universe. This universe has 36 objects, which is nothing. I'm sure you have thousands, but the point is 21 objects of that universe is not, are not used by any reports. And if I click on the detail tab and I scroll down, you see indeed that some objects are not used anywhere. So should they be part of my new universe? Uh, full usage and non-usage of everything. And finally, last one, and again, I could continue for a long time, but uh, last one here, now, I decided I wanted to migrate my adventure work because it is the database pointing to SQL Server and it's SQL Server that I want to decommission for whatever reason, right? So you, get, you can get full information about you know, where the database is, but you may not know what you have on your platform, right? If somebody says, right, everything which is touching SQL Server and maybe Microsoft Access, it needs to go. Well, unless you know, precisely everything about your platform, this will give you the extra help that you need. Now, data security is important. If you have any universe restrictions, we can tell you which universes have restrictions, the name of it, to whom it's assigned, and the detail of it. So in this case, I have a restriction done on row limit, and I have, that one doesn't really matter but I have a restriction done on the rows. And that is important. You need to make sure that all of this is working moving forward. Okay, so this is the sort of things I would look for for my analysis. Now, some of you will not be in UNX, so that would be a transformation. Others will need to um, 
to to do some repairs to your universes because you know there'll be a lot of changes like i said sql specific and uh, um, 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 table owners and other things like that so in 360 we have something here called universe management right i have the ability with this to select the universes that i want and export all of the metadata to excel this is an example of what we get here. So this is the uh, very simple eFashion universe, which I have just extracted or exported to, to Excel. So I have here in the, in the column uh, C, I have my dimensions. In the column D, I have um, the details, full description, or the active or not active, but what is probably even more, even more important is this column um, J here. You see here the exact select for each of these objects. Let's let's pretend that that one here, that code um, or that or that statement would not work on Snowflake. Snowflake they will have their 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 own syntax, which may be different to some some Oracle syntax. Well, rather than go in the universe and change these one by one, which by the way you would need to know where they are, right? With this here, I'm documenting all of it. And with the previous assessment, you would know anyway. So here I know, okay, well, all of these universes, they have all of these objects. I know there's syntax that needs to change. You go in Excel, you know, you do find and replace, you do whatever you need to do. And then you re-upload that Excel spreadsheet to uh, 360 and the changes will be made for you, right? Okay, so this is very, very powerful. You avoid mistakes, you save time, you can document easily the before and the after this is really, really, really powerful. Now, I said before that before you do anything, you want to do, you know, backups, um, of course. So I will demonstrate the backups and the rollback, but you see we have different functions here. We have done a lot of webinars on this, so please do ask questions. But yeah, we have our own recycle bin. We have all abilities to roll back. So very, very simple uh, backup uh, and restore. Now, your crystal reports and your webbies, once you're done making the changes to that new universe, they will need to be repointed, right? Now, just like everything I've shown you, this can be done manually or this can be fully automated. Uh, you can see here, we have the ability to update crystal collections and we have the ability to repoint webby universes. And all of these comes with a lot of options, right? I want to repoint. Uh, this old universe, this new universe, I want to perform an auto refresh to validate. There's no problem. I mean, there's tons of things you can do here. So um, again, automate that entire process. And finally, you want to compare, right? So I have done um, a live example here. So we have the solution to do automated regression testing. And with this, I can compare, I can validate a lot of things. I can say, right, I want to compare, I want to make sure that my data is the same, that the numerical values are the same. Um, if you have any charts or pictures, you can decide to which precision um, you want to test this. Everything about formatting, so the style and the structure, yeah, so we can compare all that. And finally, and this is quite important, performance testing. In this case here, I said, right, if I have two reports, even if they are identical, so same data, same structure, same format, same everything, but if they have a, a, a performance, a refresh time different by 10%, I want to know about it. I want to consider it a failure. So you can put any values you want on, on this, of course. Now, this is how it looks like. So. You run this, you saw the time, it ran for only a few seconds. Now, I only have three reports. Obviously, if you test a, a thousand reports, this will run for a bit longer, but you don't care. It's a background task. Now, the first report I'll open is the third one here, statements. Now, you see here, this report, there's nothing hi highlighted in orange. You see in the bottom left here, you see orders view and customers view. It's green. It means that there's no data regression anywhere but yet it's considered non-matching now if i expand at the top you see that the performance before and after is 
my friend, it took 16 seconds to refresh before the same report in Snowflake took two seconds. So in this case, it is worse by 10%, but I'm happy. Now, we provide a documentation spreadsheet of all of those things. So you, you, know, you wouldn't bother clicking on this in real life, eh? but uh, just to show you how the interface looks like. Now, let's have a look at a bigger report. So this report that I'm opening now has nearly, I forgot, is it 900 or 1,000 pages? Um, I forgot. It's uh, 954 pages. Now, you see in the bottom left, order view is an orange, customer view is in green. It means I have data regression only in the first tab. And indeed, I have regression on all pages. And you see here in the middle of the, all these orange bars, it means that I have several regressions um, um, on every pages. And if I click, you know, I can click on any of these things, it's going to tell me, is it only the data which is wrong or if there was anything with the structure or the style? So in this case, it's just the content. And finally, for those of you with uh, charts, it's not a problem. We highlight regressions here as well. So it turns out, here we go, I have a problem only in 2013. So whatever happened with, convert, with you know, my ETL or moving my data, something, something went wrong here. So at least I know where I need to, to investigate and I can document everywhere that I have some regression. So this chart is obviously wrong because the data is wrong. Okay, so that is what I wanted to um, show you with um, the different um, demos. So um, only a couple of slides left. I'm running out of time, so I'll go, I'll, I'll go with questions quickly. So we have two offerings here. Um, if you are in the first two scenarios, so either the super easy or what should be easy scenario or the ones with transformation, we have a we have an accelerator we have a pack it's which we call the professional pack we can help you do your assessment your inventory your impact analysis usage analysis and the full performance this thing but if you are in this last scenario where you have a lot more work to do and you are interested in doing the same as i mentioned on the left but also converting unv to unx or do this full universe excel um, update in Excel, take care of your backups, repoints your crystal in your WebE, um, compare between environments, your data and the performance to do a complete job. Um, we have an advanced pack here to, to help you do this, uh, this lift and shift um, scenario. Okay, before we close this, Bruno, I'll start it, but maybe you want to read the, this poll? Yeah, so that's anyway the second and last poll for this session. It's around uh, which ETL solution you're using today. Uh, so that's something where we have a lot of interest uh, to find out from you because that's one of the components in your effort to uh, go to Snowflake. Yeah, now we're only able to put five options. I know there's hundreds. <laughs> we yeah. can only put five options. So for those of you who, who select orders, and there is there is a lot, uh, if you don't mind to write in the chat or in the question box to say, hey, we use, you know, Oracle this, or we use uh, Wearscape, or I don't know. I mean, I know there's so many, so many more, but uh, <laughs> I, had to, uh, I had to select five. Okay, so I'll just wait another. Uh... And uh, anyway, for all of you who've got questions, just make sure that you use the chat box. I'm not sure we can actually uh, cover all the questions we might go through, like two or three, Patrick. And um, also make sure that you stay until the last session of the day because we've got a live concert at the end. So that's going to be pretty cool. Okay, so I wanted to share quickly. Lots of people on data services, quite pleased to see this, especially with the new offering we have, Microsoft SSIS, not surprise, Informatica. So, okay, um, thank yep. you once again for voting. And Patrick, around uh, data services, the great thing is now 360Is, we've got a connector for data services. So that's really cool. Um, okay, so I know we're, we're out of time and I want to make sure we talk questions. So um, hopefully you'll be with Batman. You think this is really cool. You'll be like the funds. <laughs> you find this very, you'll be happy with all of this. All right, should we have a look at questions, uh, Bruno? Yeah, let's go for two questions, Patrick. Okay, well, if you have identified a couple, uh, I, should, I should pick on. Otherwise, like we said before, 
all of these questions will be answered offline and shared with everybody on the call today. And um, the full demonstration I've done, I wrote a user guide, all that will be shared as well to everybody. Okay, I'm going two questions and there are so many. Thank you very much. Uh, um, okay, uh, I'll pick on this one from uh, Jawaha. Uh, is Snowflake supported for BI, uh, CMS or audit database or just for data sources? No, it's just for data sources. Um, we have Scott. No, I am the funds. Yes, Scott, you are the funds. Okay. Um, is lift and shift advanced design for CP based subjects customers still on UNV? Absolutely. Um, move that was from, from Mark. Um, yes, you will then use the IDT, the SAP IDT, to convert UNV to UNX. And then, thanks to our solutions, you, 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 you update the universes if it needs to be maintained, update your connections, do the repointing, back up before you point. Absolutely, it's the advanced package. Yes. Patrick, as your last question, could you tell me uh, how you got the information for variables and objects using a document in your document impact analysis demo from uh, Lily? Lily, um, I, uh, I'm just reading a question again, sorry. Oh, yes, so in 360 eyes, so one of the solutions with, with, with the pack, we ex because we can extract the metadata coming even from the file store, so we opened the, the, the webbies, we, we extract data from the system database, and yes, I can tell you if it's a free SQL, if it's a formula, what's inside the formula, we can tell you absolutely have, um, um, everything about all this. And um, Bruno, I'll just take one last question from Cynthia. Um, so this will work for Oracle database. Um, yes, everything I've demonstrated here, we wanted to to take the Snowflake migration as, as an example. I had to pick one, but if you do any database migration from A to B, um, 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 our solutions can help you through that process, either with the analysis or with the testing, with the universes or, or so on. So 